My name is Brooke, and this is Maker's Workshop. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so excited to see you. And if you're returning, hello again. It's me. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna be making a resin dream catcher. It's not really, I don't even know if I'd call it a dream catcher. I wanted something that would be kind of, uh, not a super literal interpretation of a dream catcher, but something very heavily inspired by the design of one that was punchy and bold and colorful that would look beautiful with the light passing through it. I thought that kind of tied right into the symbolism of the dream catcher in the first place. So for this, wood and resin was the perfect option. This is also gonna be featuring our big laser cutter. Let's get started. The first thing I needed to do was prep a large thin panel of wood. I had a dimensioned piece of wenge that I was able to quickly resaw down the middle on the bandsaw. I lined my floor with craft paper to go underneath the parallel bar clamps I'm going to be using for this glue up. I thought this wood was perfectly square before I resawed it, but turns out I was wrong and it was just a little bit off. So I needed to pass the edges through the jointer a few times until the panels fit perfectly flush. There's not a substantial surface area involved in this glue up, but there's gonna be a big resin fill in the finished piece, which is gonna add stability. So it's gonna be just fine. I laid a liberal coat of wood glue on each edge and squished everything together. To keep the top of the panel from bowing upwards, I figured I should add some weight to the top. Uh, these are boxes full of drawer slides and they're quite heavy and they work perfectly. All right, it's the next day. I'm sure everything went just fine. Let's unclamp it. After sitting overnight, it was solid as a rock and I unloaded it and prepped it to be drum sanded by sketching guidelines on both sides of the panel. I loaded up the drum sander with a 60 grit belt to make quick work of evening out this panel. And now that I knew the final dimensions of the finished panel of wood, I could jump into making the design. I knew exactly what I wanted the feathers to look like, so I created those quickly in Adobe Illustrator, starting with a circle and a triangle and an oval. And then I just tweaked the design until I was happy enough with it to move on to the top round part of the Dreamcatcher. To assist with this, I'm going to be using an iPad app called Amaziograph. Just look at this, it's amazing. It mirrors sketches along any number of axes and makes it easy to do perfect mandalas. In addition to being helpful for designing this, this app is simply delightful. Like I could probably do this all day. For something reminiscent of a dream catcher, all I needed to do was a zigzag line. I made almost 15 iterations of this, partially for practical reasons and partially just because it's easy to get carried away on this app. And then I imported my favorites into Illustrator to see how each of them looked. For the final design, I actually ended up liking one of my simplest designs the best with the feathers that I'd done. So I went with that one. And then I played around with color just so I could start having some ideas in mind. I also wound up with two feathered designs, one that was one solid color and then one that was split down the middle. But I wasn't sure which ones I was gonna use in the final piece just yet. All right, I have laser cut Wangu before and happen to know that it laser cuts really, really well, even though it's a really hard wood. Um, I just need to hone in the settings that I'm gonna wanna use for my big piece first. And the way that I do that is by designing a little test cut piece that's um, a similar level of detail to the final laser cut and just run that until I have it perfect. So that's step one. Let's do it. I lined my panel up in the laser cutter and tucked the test cut as far to a corner as I could to minimize making waste. So remarkably, I think I got this perfect on the first try, which never happens, but I'll take it. Okay, that was easy. Going in, now for the final big circular cut. Fingers crossed this goes okay because I only have one panel. 
there's something pretty cool about finally seeing a digital file that I drew from scratch come to life, especially when it's really big like this one is. All right, let's see. Let's see how it did. The laser cutter handled the wenge like butter and the round frame for the top of the dream catcher looked perfect. And then it was time to decide which feather design to cut from the remaining section of the panel. I just don't know what to do. The stakes couldn't possibly be lower. Ever comes out of my mouth right now is what I'm doing. Solid. So guys, we're gonna do the split. Split, let's go. The feathers cut beautifully well, and I finished off the night by laying out my full design on a tabletop. Now it's time to get ready to get some resin into this. And I wanna make sure that this is nice and sealed because I don't want my resin seeping between, like between cells, because some of the cells are gonna have different colors in them. Um, so my plan of attack here is to use painter's tape. I'm pulling the painter's tape as taut as I can as I lay it down here. Then I used a plastic scraper to press the tape down as hard as I could into the wood. I'm really pressing here. A credit card or something similar I think would have also worked well. I just happened to have this thing. I'm certainly not expecting this painter's tape to make a leak-proof mold at all, but I do think it's gonna do what I need it to do. That being said, I gotta cover these tables or else it's gonna be a mess and it will be very sad. Whee. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And then it was resin time. I'm using Total Boat 2 to 1 with a medium hardener for this. And I'm starting with the big round section, the bulk of which I wanted to keep clear, which made the mixing and pouring of this pretty simple. And then I wanted the spots on the perimeter of the circle to be a light silvery gray. So I added just a touch of charcoal powder and silver mica to the remaining clear resin from this first batch and stirred it up. for the feathers. I know that I want half of all of these feathers to be bright red just because just because I know I know that's what I want and then I want the other half I think to be a different color on all of them um, so I'm just gonna pick that out right now. I searched for the exact colors I wanted for the three feathers and laid out a small paper cup for each color with some pigment already portioned into each. Then I mixed up another batch of resin and divided it up between the little cups. What was left in the container, I colored bright red because I wanted a red stripe in all three feathers. And then I poured. This went off without a hitch. This is by far the best technique that I've used to do this type of thing. Um, the painter's tape, well, it's, I mean, hold up, let's see if it leaked. Okay, like little leak there, little leak there, but with the plastic bag on top of it, it's not really that big of a deal. Let's see on this one. Not a single leak on the biggest one. So yeah, I would say that the painter's tape worked really, really well to do this. I don't know that I would use this for something that had more resin than this, just because the resin itself is heavy and stuff, but I mean, it's just a really painless process, I gotta say. Oh my gosh, and it's like peeling off perfect too. Oh, it's not even sticky on the resin. Well, because it's painter's tape, duh. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so cool! Thank you. 
The tape peeled off almost perfectly. If you can see here, there was slim to no spillover. Some of the tape did get lodged into the resin on the largest piece, but I really didn't care because it's all gonna be sanded anyway, which would take care of it. I loaded up the drum sander with a 220 grit belt. As I get closer to finishing off resin pieces, I really try to avoid sanding with too coarse of a sandpaper because it leaves scratches through the resin that take a lot of time to fully sand out with finer sandpaper. I took these as far as I could get them on the drum sander before handling the final sand with a random orbital sander. I thoroughly wiped off all the dust left behind from the sanding process with paint thinner on both sides of all of the pieces. I find this to be another key detail in getting a great looking finish over the top. It's also fun because you get a sneak peek of what things are gonna look like in the end. Once the paint thinner dried, I went in with a satin wipe on poly. I used a few very thin layers to avoid having wipe lines because they're really obvious over clear resin, which I didn't want because it was such a large portion of the piece. To get this all assembled, I'm just gonna drill some holes that I can put string in. It's pretty easy. Using fishing line, I could map out where I wanted to position each feather so that everything was lined up. And then I went ahead and drilled my holes. I'm also using fishing line to assemble this because I want the strings to be as invisible as possible, but also be able to handle the weight of this. It's kind of heavy. In a perfect world, the more solid thread-like fishing line I think would be best, but I didn't have any, so I went with this and it looked really good. For some reason it didn't dawn on me till now uh, that this needs a handle of some sort, but that's pretty easy to do. Should I just freehand it? Bada bang. And then I used a thin copper chain as the top handle for this, even though you can't really see it. And then it was done. When the light hits the feathers, they almost look like they glow in real life. And the gray and clear top added just the perfect amount of dimension. enjoyed making this and I think I'm gonna hang it I have a window in my bedroom that I think it's gonna be perfect where the light really hits and I want to put it above that I think it'll be a really really beautiful piece if you enjoyed this video don't forget to stop click the subscribe button and the notification bell and I look forward to seeing you next time